Hello guys and welcome back to 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and learned about pretty much everything. Uh, we learned, of course, that Ace is Hongo, which Junpei seems to have already known about, which he shouldn't have known, but he did. And uh, we learned that Seven was once a detective, which we already knew in a previous playthrough, uh, but we didn't in this playthrough. We learned who each of the four men who worked on the Nonary Project were. We learned a bit more about Snake and Clover. And we were left on a pretty serious cliffhanger. It seems like the ship is going down at the moment. And also Junpei is freaking out because of stuff with Akane going on. So lots of stuff is happening. Let's just get right into the video. The door opened and they stumbled into the library. The shaking had stopped, but they knew the danger hadn't passed. They ran across the hallway straight for the large metal door. Next to the door was the Uranus card reader. They slid the key card through and the door rumbled open. Out of the library and into the hallway they ran. At the end of the hallway was a door. Junpei reached into his pocket to pull out the key as he ran toward it. The key he put into the lock was the Neptune key. He turned it. The lock clicked. As one, they shoved the door open and poured through it. In front of them was another great metal door. Above it was a metal plaque. It read Incinerator. So this is the Incinerator. This is the first time I've seen it from this side, but yeah, I think so. Then there ought to be a lever near the door. Yeah, right, here. Junpei ran up to it. In the safe ending, Snake was like, Oh, the lever should be right over there. And Seven was like, Wait, how, you, how do you know that? And he was like, Oh, it should take a while to recap that story, which is pretty much what Seven said last time. So, we're filling in all the blanks here. Junpei ran up to it. Pull that and the door should open. Got it. As he spoke, he pulled the lever. The motor in the door groaned as it slowly ground open. There was no time to waste. As soon as the door had opened far enough to admit them, all four dashed through. Then suddenly, there before them were the four who they'd parted from earlier. Ace and Lotus stood in front of the number 9 door. Santa was curled into a ball against the wall of the incinerator holding his stomach. And then there was June. She sat slumped against the wall, exhausted. What had happened? Junpei ran toward June. He skidded to a stop in front of her and knelt down. What's wrong? Are you okay? Her face was pale and her lips dry. When she spoke, he could barely hear her. Jumpy! You came to get me. Of course I did. I made a promise. I'm so glad you're here. So glad. She mumbled the same words over and over weakly. Junpei could feel his heart breaking. Hey, what happened to you? I'm fine. I just fainted. I wasn't feeling very good. I'm feeling a lot better now, though. Are you sure? Yes. I just need to rest a little longer. I'm I'm sure I'll be fine. You shouldn't worry about me. She was looking towards Santa. Junpei turned to look as well. Santa grimaced, his face contorted in pain. Seven grabbed him by the collar and roared at him. Hey, where is it? Where's the gun? You hide it somewhere? <laughs> Despite himself, a grunt of pain escaped Santa's lips as Seven shook him. I don't have it. I got sucker punched, and they took the gun. What? Who took it? What? Isn't that obvious? I took the gun. <sighs> Ace. He didn't. He, he did indeed have the revolver in his hand. It was pressed against Lotus's temple. Ace had her pinned to him with the other arm, and she was shaking visibly. Her fiery attitude was gone, replaced by fear. She didn't dare speak. 
There was sweat on her forehead, and when her eyes weren't flicking up to the gun pressed against her, they seemed desperately to want to say something. Just what the hell do you think you're doing, Ace? Or maybe I ought to say Gintaru Hongo, CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals? Seven's deep baritone rumble shook the walls. Ace sneered. You have me at a disadvantage, and I don't like that. You know me, but I don't know you. Do you have any idea how much I've suffered? Can you even begin to understand my pain? The pain of prosopagnosia, right? Junpei's voice was casual, or at least it was trying to be. Hm. Another irritating insect. And how do you know that, hmm? Junpei couldn't say. He just knew. Another unexplainable mystery. No matter. If you don't want to answer, it makes no difference to me. This is a waste of time, anyway. It's time for me to go. Behind Ace, Junpei could see the red. It was placed in the small indentation on the wall. Quickly, Ace played. Quickly, Ace placed his hand on the scanner. It beeped, and he forced Lotus's hand onto it as well. Then at last, he reached into the pocket of his jacket. He pulled something out and pressed it against the panel. The third asterisk appeared on the red. The thing he had used for the final verification was the bracelet with the number 9. It had belonged to the first man to die, Kubota. 1 plus 8 plus 9 equals 18, 1 plus 8 equals 9. I believe I've won this game. His smirk made Junpei's blood boil. I've had quite a time playing with you. I must thank Zero, I suppose. Wait. Something about the way he'd spoken. Did Ace not know who Zero was? Junpei's eyes flicked towards Santa. He hadn't moved since they'd entered the room. Santa was still holding his stomach and groaning as if in immense pain. Junpei wasn't sure if it was real pain, but he wasn't sure it wasn't either. What the hell did Santa have up his sleeve this time? At any rate, this game ends now. I will escape, and the rest of you will have a slightly less pleasant ending. I suggest you enjoy your final moments. Goodbye. WAIT! Ace, of course, paid no heed to Seven's request and laid hold of the lever on the red. With a sickening sense of finality, he pulled it. What? Why isn't it opening? Lotus tried to take advantage of Ace's confusion and managed to twist herself out of his grasp, but... At the last second, he grabbed hold of her wrist and shoved it onto the red. He waved the number 9 bracelet over the red and then his own bracelet as well. He pulled the lever a second time. No! What is this? Why? That digital root should be 9! It has to be 9! Then why? Why isn't it opening? Ace's fury and confusion had overridden all other thoughts. He'd set down the revolver. It was just below the red. Seven chose that moment to act. He moved far faster than a man of his bulk should have been able to, and he launched that bulk straight at Ace. No! It was over before they knew it. In the blink of an eye, Ace was on the floor. He rolled onto his side, groaning in pain. Ugh! Lotus ran straight for Junpei. She darted around behind him and stuck her head out, making sure to keep Junpei between herself and Ace. Oh, that was close. Too close. Thank you, Seven. Don't mention it. Seven stood over Ace, his breathing slow and heavy. Just one punch ain't enough for this piece of shit. After what he did nine years ago, I oughta rip him to pieces. But if a suspect can't talk, they ain't much good. Once he's locked up in a cell, we're gonna have a little chat. Nine years ago? Uh, then you must be... Yeah, you finally figured it out, dumbass. Ace planted his hands on the floor and shook his head. 
and Junpei walked toward him. He stopped and looked down at Ace with pity on his face. Ace, you killed Kubota, Nijisaki, and Musashido, didn't you? Wait, Nijisaki? He peered at Junpei, genuinely confused. Oh, right. You don't know yet. All right. We'll just go through them in order then. Let's start off with Kubota. You talked to Kubota and managed to convince him to go into door 5 alone. You killed him without making it look like you killed him. The way I figure it, you had four motives. One. In the Nonary game, the number 9 was dangerous. Whoever had the number 9 bracelet could join whatever team they wanted. You could add 9 to any number and the digital root wouldn't change. 1 plus 9 equals 10, 1 plus 0 equals 1. 2 plus 9 equals 11, 1 plus 1 equals 2. 3 plus 9 equals 12, 1 plus 2 equals 3. In other words, number 9 could do whatever they wanted. Ace had wanted to remove that threat as soon as possible. 2. Ace also wanted to have the number 9 bracelet himself so that he could make use of its power. In fact, he later made use of it in the murder of Nijisaki. 3. Even if his number had been different, Kubota presented a problem for Ace. Kubota had known Ace's past. He knew what had happened nine years before. Before he told anyone, Ace had to silence him. 4. But last, and perhaps most disturbing, Ace had used Kubota as a test. He wanted to know how serious this Nonor game was. Was it truly life or death, or simply a harmless prank? He convinced Kubota to break the rules so that he might see what happened. That was why you killed Kubota. But he was only the first. Next was Nijisaki. While everyone was off looking for the missing parts for the Reds, you ran into Nijisaki near the big hospital room. However, because of your prosopagnosia, you didn't realize he was Nijisaki. Chiefly because, when you met him, he was dressed like Snake. That was why you thought Nijisaki was Snake. No, that that's not... That was Nijisaki? Why? How did... I'll get to that. Anyway, you thought he was Snake. Snake was one of the kids in your experiment nine years ago. You remembered him because he was the blind kid, but his presence made you think. Snake was one of my subjects nine years ago. He probably hates me, but if that's true, why isn't he saying anything? Is he keeping quiet because he can't see? Or perhaps he's working with Zero to get revenge on me? Whatever the reason, anyone who knows my past is a threat. Before he tries anything, I need to get rid of him. That was when you decided you had to kill him. The murder weapon was Kubota's bracelet. You just waved it over the red. Verified your own number and then grabbed Nijisaki's arm and forced it over the scanner panel. Then, when the door opened, you kicked him in. Nine seconds later, the door closed. And then 81 seconds passed. And poor Nijisaki was dead. And you mean to say, Snake is still alive? Sorry to disappoint you, but I'm as good as new. Thank you for killing the wrong man, but I can't say I like knowing that you wanted me dead. Although, to be honest, even if you hadn't tried to kill me, I would still hate you very much. Hmm. Well, I wouldn't blame you. Ace's self-derision was frustrating, but Junpei kept his emotions in check and continued. Last but not least, let's talk about Musa Shido's death. When Clover and I were investigating the chart room, you came over to talk to me. Do you remember what you said? Oh, a pocket watch. Might I take a look at it? I handed it to you, and you left the room. Ace had been in charge of the Nonary Project. He would, of course, have known the solution to every puzzle. It followed then that he knew how to get out of the wheelhouse. All Ace had to do was place the pocket watch and the indentation on the door to unlock it. With the door open, he was able to enter the captain's quarters. Musashida was there. Next to him was an axe that fairly begged Ace to kill Musashida with it. He picked up the axe and swung it, burying the blade deep in the other man's chest. One blow was all it took. Afterwards, Ace returned the chart to the chart room as though nothing had happened. There was something I wanted to speak to with you about, Junpei. Could you come with me for a moment? With 
no reason not to, Junpei had followed Ace to the wheelhouse. When they reached the wheelhouse, Ace slipped his hand into Junpei's vest. He pulled out a piece of paper, a piece of paper Junpei used to cheat during the vote. But it wasn't the piece of paper that Ace was after. His true purpose had been to slip the pocket watch into Junpei's pocket. It wasn't a very good plan, it had far too many flaws, and the wrong word of discovery could have easily toppled it. What had made Ace so, what had made Ace so desperate? That was the only thing Junpei hadn't been able to figure out. Musashido's murder is the only one I don't understand. You obviously did it. But why? Because of this. Slowly, Ace reached down and pulled something out of his pocket. It was a folded piece of paper. Junpei took it out and opened it. This was what it said. Number one. There are two ways you might survive this ordeal. The first is to win the nonary game. The second is for you to confess your sins of the nine years past. I have prepared a camera in the captain's quarters. The images captured by that camera will be streamed through a stat satellite and distributed across the world. Simply look into the camera and repent. Once you've confessed everything, I will release you from this ship. To make your confession more credible, I have left you a witness in the captain's quarters. Perhaps he will confess with you. The decision is yours. Do as you please. Zero. When I awoke in that room on D-Deck, I found that in my pocket. That was why I chose door one when we voted. If I went through that door, I knew I could get to the captain's quarters. As you said, I knew how to enter the wheelhouse. My plan was to find the pocket watch before anyone else. If I could, then my alibi would be set. At least, that was the plan. Unfortunately for me, you got to it first. That sleight of hand was the best I could manage on short notice. You meant to kill him from the beginning then? <laughs> uh, Musashido, I mean. I only knew Musashido was the witness after I reached the captain's quarters. I asked him, and he answered. He seemed groggy. Perhaps he had only just awoken from sedation. I suppose Nijisaki was in much the same state. He seemed confused and disoriented when I encountered him. But yes, you are correct. I intended to kill him from the beginning, even though I didn't know who he was. I proceeded to the captain's quarters in order to remove this so-called witness. Ace had confessed everything. What energy he had left in him was the truth, and he sagged on his knees. Although he confessed, his sins were not forgiven. Junpei felt revulsion for the pathetic man on the floor near his feet. But in among the revulsion was a hint of pity. After all, Ace had not been the only person who murdered those three men. Junpei spoke quietly. Ace, y you figured it out, haven't you? You were being manipulated. Yes. So it would seem. I was little more than a puppet. In many ways. Everywhere I went, everything was already prepared. The reds in the large hospital room were dismantled. Nijisaki was dressed like snake. There was an axe in the captain's quarters. Musashido was delirious from the anesthetic, so he couldn't fight back. <sighs> Nijisaki as well. In retrospect, I can't understand how I could have fallen into such a simple trap. But yes, yes, this was a trap. It was Zero's trap, and I fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. I did everything he wanted me to do. Yeah. By manipulating you, Zero was able to kill three people and keep the blood off his own hands. All of this was revenge for what happened nine years ago. That's why this nonary game happened. Am I right? Santa? Junpei looked over at Santa. As Junpei spoke, he stood up, his legs still shaky. Huh? What the hell are you talking about? I don't know any- Ain't no point trying to play dumb anymore, Santa. Actually, I guess I should call you Aoi Kurashiki, huh? Seven's face was sad as he spoke. My memory came back to me, kid. You're Aoi Kurashiki, no doubt about it. Never thought I'd be back in this room talking to you. But hey, I guess this was all part of your plan, right? After all, the 
person who planned the notary game this time around was Zero. And Zero's you. <laughs> Looks like you really do have your memories back, huh? Santa's smile was sarcastic and... something else. Well, I guess there's no point in hiding it then, huh? Yeah, you got me. I'm Aoi Kurishiki. I was one of the kids in the nonary game nine years ago. I made it out. So did Snake over there. But there's one thing... No, I, I guess there's two things you got wrong. Number one, I ain't zero. What? Wait, what? Sure, I was helping Zero out, but I'm really more of an assistant, like a secretary. But an assistant's only an assistant. I didn't come up with all this. All I did was follow Zero's orders. Then, if you're not Zero, who is? Calm down there, Junpei. <laughs> didn't I say two things? You made one more mistake. Junpei, you just said... All of, All of this was revenge, was revenge for what happened, nine, for what years happened ago. nine years ago. That's why this nonary game happened. But that's not it. Revenge isn't the only purpose. There's another reason you guys were playing the nonary game. To save someone. Save someone? Right. You were brought here to help my sister. To save Akane. W what the hell are you talking about? Akane Kurashiki died nine years ago in this room. I was there. I saw... Suddenly, Seven froze. His eyes went wide as dinner plates, and he spun around toward June. Junpei followed his gaze. She was gone. Where June had been, there was nothing. What the hell? Where's... Where is she? Where's Akane Kurashiki? Seven began to mumble to himself a strange series of words strung together as if his mind wasn't functioning properly. His face was twisted with effort, as though he were struggling with something they couldn't see. He gritted his teeth and pressed his hands against the sides of his head. Ugh! Oh! My head! Oh, my head! It feels like it's gonna pop! He groaned and fell to his knees. Seven! What the hell is going on? I don't know. I don't know, I just... Oh! I swear to God, my head feels like it's about to explode! From somewhere far away, they all heard a deep, heavy noise. It sounded like a tremendous wheel slowly beginning to turn. Santa seemed to have entered an almost trance-like state. His words were calm and measured. What was the Nonary Project? I'm sure you know already, but I'll tell you one more time. It was a project designed to test a particular phenomenon. And what was that phenomenon? for two organisms to communicate with one another in the absence of physical contact. The morphogenetic field theory. Could human beings use these invisible fields to exchange information? That was what this experiment was conducted to determine. There were two separate locations. One was the gigantic, and the other was a building in Nevada called Building Q. The nine children trapped in Building Q were faced with numerous puzzles, copies of identical ones on the gigantic. They were told to send their answers into the morphic field set and transmit them to their brothers and sisters on the gigantic. The transmitters were put in Building Q and the receivers were put on the gigantic. Each sibling pair was supposed to be split up, but... But there was a mistake. Akane was a transmitter. She should have been in Building Q. However, for some reason, she was placed on the gigantic with the receivers, like me. Perhaps she was mistaken for someone who was supposed to be in Group A. Whatever the case, Akane ended up on the gigantic. I think I've told you enough. You get it, don't you? I'm pretty sure you know where this is going, Junpei. Where what is going? Don't play dumb. You know things you shouldn't. Things you couldn't. How did you know Ace had prosopagnosia? How did you know why Ace wanted to kill Kubota and how Nijisaki was killed? Were you surprised when you found out Ace was Hongo? And what about the coffin Snake was trapped in? How the hell did you open it? Well, that's... The answer to that is easy. He knew. 
because I knew. Junpei was receiving information that I sent to him through the morphic field set. It's simple, really. How do I know the alternate futures, then? Imagine a river that splits in two like an upside-down Y. The river flows from the top to the bottom from a single stream into two branches. It only flows in one direction. It can never flow backward. Information is the same way. It moves from the past to the future, but never flows backward. That's why people at the river's source, in the past, will never know about those downstream in the future. But the people downstream will never know about one another either. Information only flows along the path of the river. But I am different. I can manipulate the morphic field set to pluck knowledge from the future. I know what happens on either fork of the river, even though the people on either fork know nothing about one another. Now, who am I? I am I, the ninth letter of the alphabet, but I am also zero. No, that's not true. I'm not really zero. Not yet. Perhaps you can say I am less than zero. Zero is my future. In nine years, I will be zero. Where... Where did she go? Jun. No. Akane. Where did you go? Santa! Why is Clover... Oh shit. Freeze! Santa's got the gun. Guess he picked it up when we weren't watching. Looks like he's turned the tables on Ace, though. Wonder how he likes having a gun to his head. Get up! Sure isn't about to take that gun off him for a minute, is he? Ace isn't putting up any kind of fight. I mean, I don't think I would either, but he just looks... drained. I guess he's going for the door, huh? He doesn't need to verify to go through that door, but... Hey, what's your plan, Santa? What are you doing? He can't get through any number of doors with just two people. What the hell is he thinking? Didn't I tell you? I'm Santa Claus. It's time for me to go make a wish come true. That's it? That's all he's gonna give us? What the hell does that even mean? Shit, they're out. And now the gate's shut. Looks like the rest of us are stuck in here. They're all looking at me. At least Seven's headache is gone. You seems to be alright. Well, I guess there's no harm in trying. Let's see if this door still opens. Damn! Well, it looks like this door isn't opening anytime soon. Oh, you mean we're trapped? So it would seem. What the hell is Santa trying to do? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, what? Have you considered where we are? There can really only be one thing Santa would do now. No, you can't be serious! Oh, but he is. Shit. We've gotta do something. Maybe we can still get out through door 9. There's the red. Yeah, alright. We can do this. I've just gotta... No, it's not gonna work. There's no way. The five of us can't open this door. 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7 plus 8 equals 26. 2 plus 6 equals 8. Is there any combination that'll work? Junpei, can I borrow your pen and notebook? Sure, why not? I don't think I'm gonna need them. Ever again. Well, she certainly looks purposeful. Looks like she's writing equations. A lot of them. Hmm? Aw, oh, man, she doesn't look very happy. What? Hey, no need to be ripping pages out like that. Jeez. What the hell are you doing, Clover? Give me that! All right, at least Seven got out away from her. Maybe now I can look at what she was writing. Let's see. Shit. And there's no other way? Lotus. 
Looks like she'd figured it out, though. Man, this is just too cruel. It's okay. Go. Lotus. Come on, you know we can't do that. Oh, don't give me that. I'm sure you'd love to get rid of me. God damn it, you idiot! Well, where the hell did that come from? Looks like she expected that about as much as I did. Without... Uh... If you're not... Look, it'd be bad, alright? For a cop, he sure doesn't have much confidence. Bad? Uh... Yeah. I... If there weren't assholes like you around, I'd be out of a job. Uh-huh. Look, I'm just not leaving you behind, alright? End of story. Seven. He's right. I'm not leaving you either. Me too. You didn't honestly think I'd abandon you, did you? Uh, you're all idiots. Act as tough as you want, Lotus. We can all see you're about to cry. That being said, however... However, I doubt we would be able to open the door anyway, even if we were to leave Lotus behind. Huh? Why? I trust you remember what happened to Ace? I couldn't, uh, see exactly what happened, but I was able to guess what he was attempting to do earlier, at the Red. Oh, yeah. No! no. What is what this? Is this? Why? why? The, the digital, digital route, route should be nine! nine. It, it has, has to be nine! nine. Then, then why? Why, why isn't is it, it opening? opening? Just to see. Why don't we give it a shot? Give it a shot? Yes, that is what I said. You were right. It ain't opening. But it did open nine years ago. The digital route was nine then, I'm sure of it. You think maybe they changed the settings? Perhaps. Shit. If we can't get through the door, we can't get out. The walls are way too high. There's no way in hell we could get that to that hole Seven popped out of nine years ago. All we can do is stand here and stare at the door with a nine on it. I guess this is it. This is the end. I was watching. I had watched everything that was reflected in his eyes. I was listening. Every sound that vibrated in his eardrums I heard. Smell, taste, touch. I felt everything he felt. I knew. I knew everything about him. What he was thinking. What he was feeling. What he was sensing. All of his feelings and worries and fears became mine. My mind, my consciousness, was inside of him. Through the morphic field set, we were resonant, and we were one. I was him, and at the same time, I was an observer. It started with a tremendous noise like a clap of thunder. That was approximately nine hours ago. A bomb had gone off on the ship we were on. That was when my resonance with him began. My resonant event melted into him, and we became one, inside of Junpei. Somehow I found myself in Junpei's mind nine years in the future. But I didn't lose myself. I was living in two realities at once. One was the present, and the other was the future. Perhaps you can think of it as two movies showing on the same screen at the same time. Eventually, it becomes difficult to separate them, and determine which movie is which. However, if I concentrated, I was able to focus on one or the other. That was why I was able to grasp what was happening in front of me. Come on, over here! That was my brother, Aoi. He was screaming. I followed him. Around me were seven other children. They all looked like they were about my age. Come on, hurry up! We ran down a long, straight hallway, and burst into the large hospital room. Yeah. 
everyone was arguing. Two of the boys got in a fist fight. A girl watching them began to cry. I want to go home, she cried. I want to go home. Another girl slapped the crying girl and glared down at her. It had been two hours since the nonary game began. We were starting to fall apart. But just when all hope seemed lost, Light started talking. He was blind. Nine years later, we would call him Snake. Hello? Everyone? Could you come over here for a moment? He was older than most of us, and his voice had authority and dignity. The fights died down and we gathered around him. I have a little sister. She is very important to me. Right now, she is over in Building Q, and is desperately trying to send information over to me. Her name is Clover, and today is her ninth birthday. As he spoke, he pulled something from his pocket. In his hand were nine four-leaf clovers. I was going to give these to her as a birthday present. I was outside picking them when I was abducted. I'm sure I've already told you, but I am blind. For a man who can't see, collecting nine of a very specific plant is... Well, it is difficult. But my sister means a great deal to me. And I hope that these would show her how much I cared for her. Since it's her ninth birthday, I thought nine four-leaf clovers would be appropriate. Every one of you has a brother or a sister in Building Q with Clover. For their sake, we have to survive. We have to get off this ship. Do you understand? If we're going to do that, there are three things you have to remember. We need trust and love, and we have to have faith in one another. If we can take all three of those to heart, then I promise that good luck will come our way. Did you know that the leaves on the four-leaf clover mean faith, trust, love, and luck? Those words are leaf words. So if you believe what I've told you, and you understand, then I want you each to have one of these. They're a promise between friends. He gave a clover to each of us. I took one too. Eventually he was left with only a single four-leaf clover. He had one last thing to say. Now don't ever forget, so long as you have that, we will always be connected. Do you understand? When he finished, the tension of only a few minutes before was gone. We were calm. After that, we ran around the ship for a while longer and opened several of the numbered doors until we finally found a door with the number 9 on it. In fact, there were two doors with nine on them, and we found them in the, in the chapel. We split into two groups and walked through the doors. Before long, we all found ourselves in a room with a ceiling that looked like an upside-down funnel. For some reason, this room had another number 9, but this time, it was the only one. But if there was only one door, that meant that only five people could escape. What are we gonna do? There aren't any other doors! We began to panic. Then, as if things had not gotten bad enough already, Incineration command has been acknowledged. Automatic incineration will take place in 18 minutes. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. Repeat. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. What? What's happening? What did that thing say? That didn't sound good. My brother Owie swallowed hard and answered. I think it means this room is gonna burn. The plaque on the door says incinerator, and that voice said that the incineration is about to start, and incinerate means to burn. No! Help me! Abject terror filled the room as everyone began to scream and cry. Every pair of eyes were filled with despair. Then... 
High up on the wall, a door opened, and a man appeared. He was a huge, frightening mountain of a man, as large as a bear. Nine years later, we would call him Seven. Don't worry, kids, I'm not your enemy. I'm one of the good guys. I'm a detective. I'm here to rescue you. The rest happened just like Seven had said it did. The four of us who had stayed behind were saved by Seven. We crawled through the vent, away from the incinerator, and slid down into the hall. We came out on the other side of door 9. On the wall opposite the door was a set of double doors. We went through those and began to run up the spiral stairs. As we ran, I led the way. Behind me were Nona, my brother Owie, Snake, and Seven. The other children, the ones who'd gone through door 9 before us, were up ahead. I could hear them cheering each other on. We ran, and ran, and ran. We leapt across as many stairs as we could and kept running. The stairs spiraled upward like a tornado. Eventually, I pulled ahead of the rest. Perhaps Nona had slowed them down. I didn't want to lose them, so I slowed down as well. I didn't stop, but I glanced over my shoulder from time to time to see if they had caught up. That was when I realized... Oh no, where is it? Did I drop Jumpy's present? I knew I'd had it with me when we passed through the vent. Then, I had dropped it as had I dropped it as we slid out. I had to go back. I had to, but I knew I couldn't tell the others. They would stop me. I was sure of that. I didn't stop to think. I simply moved. I ran to the central hall, the room that connected to all the other areas of the ship, and hid in the shadows. And moments later, I felt a run of wind as they ran past me up the staircase. I waited until they were out of sight, and then I ran. I moved as quietly as I could down and down and down. Finally, I reached the bottom deck. I ran into the hallway and looked around frantically. There it is! It was just where I'd thought it would be, sitting under the opening of the vent. I ran over and snatched it from the floor, but as I ran back toward the stairs and freedom... The door to the incinerator opened, and a man stepped out. It was Hongo. Gentaro Hongo. Nine years later, we would call him Ace. Ah, how wonderful to see you decided to come back. His smile made my blood run cold. It looked mechanical, as if someone had simply pulled up the corners of his mouth. Come with me. We must continue the experiment. I shook my head, eyes wide. Slowly, I began to walk backwards. One step, two steps, three steps. Then I spun around and broke into a run. I felt Hongo's hand close over my left wrist. I said, come with me. There was an edge of insanity to his voice now. I pulled as hard as I could. No, stop, let go of me, let go. I shook my body and flailed my arms, trying desperately to get Hongo to let go of me. But I was still only a child. I was no match for a man like Hongo. Stop struggling, goddammit! Do as I tell you! He heaved on my arm, trying to pull me into the incinerator. I screamed. Help me! Somebody help me! Then suddenly... Akane! The door to the stairs flew open, and my brother Aoi burst out of it. Behind him came Seven and Snake. Uh, Akane! He cried my name again as he leapt toward Hongo. You came back! I cried out. Ha! Ah, you're too late, idiot! Hongo threw his full weight against my arm, pulling us both into the incinerator. Ah! The force of it threw me to the floor. I scrambled to my feet and looked toward the, the open number 9 door. Hongo stood between it and me, but behind him I could see my brother, his fists clenched. But those fists never reached Hongo. With the cold, heartless screech of metal on metal, 
The door slammed shut. Hongko glanced at me mechanically, his face registering that there was an object there, but not anything he would consider a human being. Then he turned away and walked to the red that sat next to the door. He reached into his pocket and removed two bracelets. He waved them both over the scanner panel. Two asterisks appeared on the red. He checked the screen, then tossed the bracelets carelessly onto the floor. What was he doing? What was the point? He made no effort to explain himself, of course. He said nothing at all and walked past me as though I were nothing more than a rock by the roadside. A few moments later... The double door slid shut as well. Faintly, I could hear someone pounding on the door behind me. I turned around and ran toward the door with the nine. Akane! Akane! Are you okay? I could hear a voice from the other side of the door. Wor a worried, frightened voice. Help me! My throat was already raw, but I screamed as loud as I could. My voice echoed, lonely, around the empty room. What should I do? I, I think I'm trapped in here! Where's Hongo? He went out the other door! W what? Then it started again. Warning. Warning. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. Incineration will begin in 18 minutes. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. Holy shit. Man, I knew what he was gonna say, but this is one hell of a creepy voice. I knew it! Uh, it's starting. Santa started the incinerator. Fuck! Man, I never thought I'd hear that damn voice again after nine years! What the hell? What. The. Hell! What in God's name are you talking about? It's nine years this and nine years that, and when it's not nine years something, then you're talking about some sort of fucking experiments! You aren't making any sense! I'm sorry, Lotus, but we really don't have time to explain it right now. I promise, I'll tell you everything once we get out of here. But- Incineration will begin in... 17 minutes. You know what that means, right? Incinerate means burn! Uh, what kind of idiot do you think I am? I know what incinerate means. Well, god damn it! Okay, okay, fine! I won't ask anything else. Talk about whatever you want. But you have to do something for me. Seven, figure this out. What? Why me? Just shut up and stop this thing! How the hell? There has to be some sort of emergency shut-off button. There isn't anything like that. How the hell do you know? Because I looked for it nine years ago. Yeah, Lotus isn't happy about that. Can't really blame her. Wait. The floor. It's moving. What else can I say about it, but... What the hell is that? What else could I say, but... What is that? The floor opened and a machine rose up out of it. It looked like a computer. At least it kind of did. There was a monitor, a keyboard, a cross-shaped device of some kind. Something about the machine scared me, but I forced myself to walk up to it. I was terrified. Tears poured down my face. I wiped them off even as more took their place and forced myself forward. Finally, I reached it. I looked at the screen. It was blank. All I saw was my, my own frightened face staring back at me from the glass, drenched in tears. All I can see on the screen is a reflection of my own face. I'm looking kind of freaked out. I know I'm sweating like crazy, but seeing it kind of drives it home. Okay, Junpei. Just calm down, alright? Everything's gonna be okay. God. Man, I wish that thing would just shut up. Incineration will begin in... 15 minutes. Alright, back to this thing. If it's only showing up now, then it's gotta be important. But what the hell am I supposed to do with it? Hmm. Hey! 
Move! Gah. Hey, we're all tense, lady. That doesn't mean you gotta shove people around. Okay, it's turned on. There's nothing on the screen, though. Oh, this is bad. This is really bad. If there's nothing on here, how are we supposed to do anything with it? Sure, just push buttons. I'm sure that'll... Huh. Well, at least it's on now. What's on the screen, though? What is this? What's up? It looks like some sort of puzzle. It's got a bunch of numbers scattered across a 9 by 9 grid. The numbers range from 1 to 9. Do you think that if we solve this puzzle, the incinerator will stop? Yeah. Well, we can hope, right? Alright, puzzle. How do you work? Ah, oh, man, that goddamn voice again. Incineration will begin in... 13 minutes. Shit. 13 minutes. Can we really do this? My heart feels like it's gonna pop. My heart was pounding like it was about to explode. I stared at the puzzle on the screen. I was sure I had to solve it somehow, but I had no idea how. My connection to Jumpy had been gone for a while. His mind was gone. I couldn't get any more information from him. I felt the seconds tick by as I stared at the screen, completely lost. My cheeks felt hot as tears poured over them. Then I heard a voice. Hey! What are you doing? It was muffled. I turned around. Pressed against the window in the entry door was a face. A frightening evil face. It was Hongo. How long had he been watching me? Ah, oh, don't know what to do. He was yelling, but his voice was still muffled. It's simple, really. But I suppose I might as well tell you. Just solve the puzzle. On that machine. <laughs> His laughter was muffled by the door, but it still tore at my heart like the claws of a vicious monster. I bit my lip and glared at Hongo, struggling to hold back hot tears. You're a terrible person! I hate you! Oh my! How could you call a gentleman such as myself a terrible person? That's not very nice. I'm quite fair. I don't use tricks or play dirty. You see? I've even left you a way out. A way out? Didn't you hear me? All you have to do is solve that puzzle. Do that, and you can stop the incinerator. What's the point of stopping it? You'll only capture me and make me do this all again. I'm not going to listen to you. If you're just going to throw me back in here, I might as well just die now! My goodness, haven't you listened to anything I've said? I told you, I'm a fair man! If you solve the puzzle, the verification function of the red will in turn activate. If this experiment is to deliver valid results, there must be a chance of success. If you succeed, you will escape! The verification function of the red? Then I remembered. Look, before Hongo left the room, he had scanned two bracelets into the red. Ah, so you do remember. Right now there are two numbers in the red. The first is one, and the second is three. Say, Akane, what's your number? I looked down at my left hand. The face on my bracelet showed a five. One plus three plus five equals nine. I ran to the door with the nine on it. I grabbed the red and put my hand against the scanner panel. You really aren't one for listening, are you? I hear Hongo's muffled voice from across the room. I've already told you, didn't I? Once you solve the puzzle, the verification function of the red will activate. In other words, if you haven't solved the puzzle, you can't enter your number. What kind of fool are you? You could never understand. You don't know what it's like to spend every day surrounded by monkeys. Now start the experiment. Solve the puzzle. I can't. I don't know how. Of course you don't. Isn't that the point? You understand, don't you? Access the morphogenetic field and find the solution. I can't. Then you'll die. 
you'll burn alive. <laughs> it's going to be quite hot in there in a few minutes. I imagine it will be very painful. <laughs> <laughs> His horrible laugh echoed across the room, and even after the face disappeared from the window, I could hear it. Incineration will begin in... 10 minutes. I was crying, great gulping sobs broken by hiccups that shook my body. I was terrified. I could feel my fear pressing down on me like a tremendous weight. Somehow, I forced my shaking legs to carry me back to the device. I stared at the empty monitor. I can't! I just can't! There's no- th there's no way! I can't figure this out! What was I going to do? I didn't- I didn't know. I didn't know! I didn't even know where to start. Fear scattered through my thoughts. All I could think of was how I was going to die. My palms were sweating and my blood was boiling in my veins. It was hot. So hot. I couldn't breathe. And I felt, I felt dizzy. My heart roared in my chest as if it would pound itself into pieces. I reached into my pocket. I wrapped my hand around the thing I'd come back to get. The doll Jumpy had given me. At least I had that. I held it tight with both hands and prayed. Help me! Jumpy! Help me! Help me! Help me! Jumpy! 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 Please! Help me! Jumpy! Akane? Akane? Who the hell is Akane? Shut up! Just shut the hell up! Seven and Lotus don't understand. I think Clover and Snake have an idea, though. Clover's looking at me. And I think Sna Snake may have figured it out. No, it doesn't matter. They're in my way. Where'd she go? Maybe over here? Akane! Akane! Can you hear me? Akane! Say something! Fuck. Did something break our connection? I swear I just heard her. Shit. Akane! Answer me! Akane! Jumpy? I spun around. I heard a voice. His voice. I looked around. He wasn't in the room, of course. But I'd heard it so clearly. Like he was right there. Jumpy! I screamed as loud as I could. Immediately, I heard him call back. Akane! That's her! She's there! Then that means... Akane! Are you in an incinerator right now? Yes, I am! How? How did you know? Now I understand what Santa meant. Right. There's only one way to help her. You were brought here to help my sister. To save Akane. I think I get it now. Incineration will begin in... Seven minutes. As quickly as I could, I told him that I had to solve the puzzle in order to stop the incinerator. Got it! And I do. I get everything now. At last, I finally understand what all of this means. I know why the Nonary game was held today. I know why we were kidnapped and brought here. It was all for this moment. All of this was planned out to lead to this one moment. Oh my god. This is... This is insane. I I can't believe it. But there's only one possible answer. June is... Zero is... Akane Kurashiki. She recreated the history of the future that she had a glimpse of nine years ago. She tried to save herself that way nine years ago. No, she's trying to save herself right now. That means that there's only one thing for me to do. Even if this is all some sort of insane plan. I will save her. I will save Akane Kurashiki. I must save her, no matter what. Incineration will begin in six minutes. Jumpy! Yeah, I know. Just hang on, all right? I promise I'll get you out of there. 
I'm not gonna let you die. I promise. So don't worry, all right? Just give me a few minutes, okay? Okay. My voice shook as I answered. It was hot in the room. It felt like my heart was on fire. Six minutes or not, my heart burned with my feelings for him. All right. Time to get to work, Junpei. Snake talking to them about something? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Get out of my way. Hey, what are you- Just trust me, okay? Sorry, Lotus. I didn't mean to snap, but there's a lot more at stake here than your pride. I'll apologize later, alright? Now, let's have a look at this thing. I've got numbers all over the grid. Now, if I'm looking at this right, I'm gonna need to fill in all the empty squares with other numbers from 1 to 9. But I can't use the same two numbers in any, in any horizontal or vertical row. The same has to go for the 3x3 three three square with the th thick lines around them. That means I need to put different numbers in the horizontal and vertical rows, as well as the 3x3 three three spaces. I think that's the rule here. Alright, bring it on. I'm gonna do this on my own, with my own mind. I'm gonna solve this problem. This is the final puzzle of the game. Now, in order to solve this, there, the first thing that we need to do is fix this. So, throughout the entire game, Akane has been transmitting us stuff from the bottom screen where we've been doing the puzzles to the top screen so Junpei can know the answers to the puzzles. Uh, and now we have the... If you look at it like a DS, uh, the, bottoms, the screens are now flipped. And since Junpei has always been on the top, and we need Junpei to solve the puzzle, we need to flip the DS upside down so that Junpei at the top has access to the touch screen. So now we have everything in the right spot. We have Akane over there on the uh, on what on the DS would be the bottom where Akane has been the whole time, and now Junpei has access to the puzzle on the top on the top screen, which is now the touch screen. So now all we have to do in order to save Akane is show her how to do the Sudoku puzzle. So let's go ahead and just fill it in. As we go ahead and do this puzzle right here, one thing that I want to talk about is this is one of my favorite endings to a game of all time just because the idea of you know flipping a DS upside down is super cool and the whole thing about the top screen being you know Junpei, what Junpei is seeing and the bottom screen being what Akane is seeing uh, that whole twist being is like such a cool thing and such an incredible way to make you go back through the game and be like huh I guess this was sort of hinted at the whole time. And there are quite a few things like that. Uh, first of all, um, like I said, you know, Junpei and all of his friends uh, are never shown on the bottom screen at all, because obviously, you know, the bottom screen is what Akane is seeing. And so maybe that sort of set something off in your mind where you're like, huh, that's weird. Or maybe it didn't. Uh, during the first escape room, uh, when you go and check out the mirror and Junpei has a flashback about what happened uh, before he was entered into the nonary game, there's a line of dialogue where it says, where the narrator says, did I leave that open? And it's not in quotes, so it's not Junpei's thoughts. That's Akane, the narrator, asking, did I, you know, Akane slash Zero leave the window open? Uh, but since, you know, it's early in the game, uh, you don't really think about, you don't really think much about it, and you're just like, oh, it's just the narrator saying Junpei's thoughts. Uh, there's also, this gives us an in-universe explanation as to why we as the player get better at the puzzle whenever we're going through it. It's because Akane is also getting better at the puzzle because she's seen it multiple times. And so she's able to go around the room and quickly find all of the items that you need to grab. Also, the entire second class cabin uh, behind the number four door, uh, that has so many hints 
about what's going on because that's you know where we first learn about morphogenetic fields and that entire room just hints so much at it there's a video called the masterful storytelling of 999 second class cabin uh, I'll go ahead and link it in the description but that basically goes into detail about how that entire thing is set up so that it's just like the morphogenetic field because there's two rooms that are exactly like one another and you need both rooms to figure out the entire puzzle but anyways that's it once you've completed the sudoku puzzle you've officially saved akane kurashiki yes that's it akane did you get it I did! I solved it! I mean, really, you solved it for me, but I copied everything you did! Now I just have to press enter! Then what the hell are you waiting for? Push it! Okay, I will! I hit the enter key. Emergency shutdown command has been confirmed. Incineration system has been disabled. What's wrong? It worked! It worked! The incinerator shut down! It worked! Tears rolled down my face as I cried out to him, but they were a very different sort of tears. A wonderful feeling of accomplishment and relief flooded my body. At the same time, what strength I'd had left disappeared and I collapsed to the floor. For a while, I just lay there, laughing and crying and enjoying being alive. Every time I thought about him, I thought my heart would burst. Whew! I can't believe I did that, but I am so glad, so glad. I, I feel like my heart's on fire. No, I don't have time to be thinking about that kind of shit. I need to tell Akane. Akane, sorry, but things are kind of busy over here. I'm gonna have to hang up now, okay? Oh, of course, that's fine. I wiped the tears from my eyes and nodded vigorously, even though I knew he couldn't see me. Then I looked over at the corner of the floor. There were the two bracelets Hongo had left behind. Now. Well, Seven and Lotus don't look particularly happy with me. Not a very nice look to give someone who just saved your lives, guys. Junpei, are you... Okay? Ah, shut it! Right. Okay, so maybe they have a reason to be pissed off. So what if I haven't pressed the enter key yet? Alright, nothing holding me back now. Here goes! Wait. Incineration will begin in... 90 seconds. It doesn't sound like it's stopping. <sighs> what the shit? Why isn't it stopping? Okay, maybe I didn't hit the key hard enough. Just hit it again. And again. And again. Okay, that's not working either. The alarm's still going off. What the hell is going on? I've got all the right numbers in the right boxes. It's perfect. So why the fuck isn't this thing stopping? Incineration will begin in... 60 seconds. Wait. Of course! That's what these numbers under the puzzle mean. 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7 plus 8. Snake, Clover, Me, 7, and Lotus. Then, door 9. No. That's it! The number on the door isn't a 9. It's not even a number. It is hidden, but an exit can be found. Seek a way out. Seek a door that carries a cue. Holy shit. Of course! Then we just have to put in the right number into the red and... Incineration will begin in 30 seconds. Run, guys! Get to the door! Run! Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Don't have much time. Man, I sure hope they can just trust me on this one or we are all fucked. Alright, no time to explain, just go! Quick! Verify your numbers on the red! Verify? Who? What combination? All of us! We all need to verify! Why? You really think this is a good time to ask questions? Just do it! 
Hurry, 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 hurry! Incineration will begin in 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Central gate has been opened. Incineration system has been disabled. Oh, thank fucking Christ. No. No time to be happy. Time to go. <laughs> Hurry! We've only got nine seconds before the door closes! Go! 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 Come on, guys. Move it. Okay, they're all through. Move it, Junpei. Just in time. And there goes the door. No, don't calm down yet. You're not done. We've still got to find the dead. <laughs> Shit. Huh. Looks like we made it, huh? <laughs> 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 Man, that guy can sh you sure can laugh when he wants to. Looks like Clover and Lotus are totally out of energy. I guess Snake probably can't see the sky, but he sure can feel the fresh air. I just want to take a nap. Akane? Akane! Can you hear me? Akane! I just want to tell her we made it. I want to tell her how good I feel. But nothing. The door opened. Standing in front of it was my brother. Akane! Oi! I cried his name even though my voice was almost gone from screaming. I leapt into his arms. Oh, Aoi! <gasps> Akane! I buried my face in his chest and cried again. I cried and cried and cried. The steady thump of his heart in my ear made me feel like I was home. Its beat was almost like a lullaby. I wrapped my arms around him as far as they would go and held him as tight as I could. Just to be there felt like a miracle. I hadn't felt the warmth of another human body in what had seemed like an eternity. I just wanted to stay there in his arms forever. But I couldn't. The moment I'd passed through the door, my bracelet had begun the countdown to death. I leapt away from him and looked around. The door had already closed. I spotted the dead only a short distance away. It took me only a moment to get to, and scan all the bracelets. I left the ones Hongo had dropped on the scanner panel. That was it. Ah! I took a deep breath and looked around again. The huge detective who'd we'd call Seven in nine years, and Snake the blind boy, were looking at me. They seemed to have been utterly stunned by my sudden appearance. Their eyes were wide and their mouths hung open. Alright, let's get out of here. If we don't book it, we might run into Hongo again. Aoi was right. It was time we got moving. The mention of Hongo seemed to jar Seven and Snake out of their surprise and they nodded. We took off running, up the spiraling stairs to freedom. Up, 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 up. Man, these stairs go on forever. But if they can get us out of here, no wonder we're running so hard. My heart's beating so hard I can barely hear. God, I can't wait to breathe real air again. Huh? Is Seven talking? Hey Junpei, can I ask you something? <laughs> What's up? That door, the one with the nine on it. Why did it open? Yeah, all five of us verified our numbers on the red. 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 7 plus 8 is 26. That makes our digital root 8. It shouldn't have opened. <laughs> That's not like you, Lotus. I thought you would have figured it out already. Huh? Why? 
because you were the person who taught me about the idea of bases. Bases? Yeah. What are the two numbers in base two? Zero and one. How about base ten? That goes from zero to nine, right? Then how about base sixteen? Zero through F. After nine, it starts at A and goes from there. B, C, D, etc. You're right. In other words, A in base 16 is 10 in base 10. B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, and so on. So what about it? You don't get it? What if we keep going with that pattern? What if you go way past base 16 all the way to base 27? Base 27? Yeah. Well, the numerical digits are the same. So I guess you'd add alphabetical digits. E is 14, F is 15, G is 16. H is 17, I is 18, J is 19. K is 20, L is 21, M is 22. N is 23, O is 24, P is 25. Yeah, and what comes after that? Q. 26! And what does that mean? That wasn't a 9 on the door. It was a Q! A fucking lowercase Q! Yep, that's pretty much it. I guess to put it another way, you could say that it was a 9 in base 10, but a Q in base 27. Time for more running. God, my thighs are killing me. I swear, any moment now I'm gonna tear a muscle. I feel like every single cell in my body is dying for air. Damn, every breath I take is a chore now. I feel like my lungs are gonna burst. Maybe just a short rest. No, can't stop. Don't have time. Come on, legs, there can't be that many- There can't be many more of these steps left. Let's run. Run! Like a bullet down a rifle barrel. Like a tornado cutting through a sea of clouds. I feel like we're running along the back of a giant coiled dragon. Finally! Jesus, I can barely breathe. No, Junpei. No time to rest. Pull yourself together. You're almost there. All right. I'm gonna open it. Yeah. Yes. We're finally here! Please do! Sure. Sure, you look like a big, heavy door. But you're the only thing standing between me and my freedom. But even more important than that, you're the only thing standing between me and Akane. You're gonna open, and you're gonna open now. I felt a hand on my shoulder. It was Aoi's. He gave it a small, reassuring squeeze. I was so happy, I felt like I could melt. Uh, my heart was at peace. And not only because my brother and I were back together again. Thanks to the huge detective, all nine of us who had been kidnapped... We're finally able to escape from the gigantic. On the distant horizon, we could see the faint outline of the ship as it sank. It gave a thunderous roar as it finally slipped beneath the waves. Its last cry echoed out across the ocean, and then it was gone. It's over. It's over, Owie whispered. Yeah. It was over. It was finally over. Or was it? Was it really? No, that was wrong. That wasn't it at all. I was sure of it. This wasn't the end. It was only the beginning. This was only a prologue to what would happen in nine years. Yes! Finally! Air! Gah! Damn, that sun is bright. I can barely see anything. Huh. I gotta admit, this doesn't look quite like... Wait. No way! You've gotta be shitting me! What? It can't be! This is...
This is the building in the Nevada desert. The mock experiment building. Oh my god. This whole time we were in building Q. Sure enough, that's a desert out there. Mountains all around it. Hello there, son. Boy, am I ever glad to see you. I don't think I've ever been so happy to see a sunrise. Huh? Did I just hear something fall? Right, our bracelets. Guess I've never really got a good look at the underside at the underside of one of these. Let's see what's inside you. Just a little le electronic chip, like in an ATM card. That's it. There's nothing else. Nothing that even looks like a detonator. There was never a detonator to begin with. Figures. Akane. Jumpy! <laughs> Guess I must be pretty crazy about the girl if I think I'm hearing her voice in the wind. And that has been nine hours, nine persons, nine doors. What an incredible game. I know I say that about pretty much every game I let's play, but that's because I only let's play the games that I really love. And this is no exception. This is my second favorite game of all time. And the only reason, reason it's not my first favorite game of all time is because the fir my first favorite game of all time is incredibly important to me. And I don't think... I'll ever, I'll ever have anything top that game, so this is like my honorary favorite game of all time. Just, oh, it does so much cool stuff, it, especially with like the DS's uh, hardware. I know that I already mentioned about how cool it is with the top screen and the bottom screen stuff, but it cannot be stated enough. Also, all of the music is absolutely incredible. I don't think there's a single sound, a uh, single song on the soundtrack where I'm like, and eh, that's not really that great. All of the music is incredible. I loved all of the characters. Uh, there's just so much awesome stuff in this game. I don't know how I could ever possibly put that into words. So, yeah. Genuinely, thank you guys all so much for watching. This has been so much fun to play for you guys. And I can't wait to play our next Let's Play, which will also be a visual novel. Although it'll be a lot shorter than this game. Are you... okay? Aw, oh, come on, this is nothing. Really? Yeah. You don't look okay. It was just before the end of elementary school. Jumpy and I were sitting next to each other on a small hill looking down at the town as the sun slowly set. How does it look then? How does it look then? He was half serious and half joking. I thought about it for a minute at first. Um, well, let's see. It looks like you kissed a toad and got warts, but then they just kept growing and growing and growing. <laughs> What does that even mean? Junpei grinned and... Oh, ow, 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 See? I told you you're not okay. Too, you're too reckless. You can't beat five eighth graders, Jumpy. That's crazy. Yeah, but I couldn't just stand there. I mean, don't you think so? I had to go do something. Look at the Nevada desert go past. For an SUV. This thing sure is a pretty smooth ride. Sure was nice of someone to leave it. Sure was nice of someone to leave it for, for us outside the building. Keys in the ignition and gas in the tank. Almost like it was a present, you know. Anyway, we jumped in and now here we are, screaming across the desert. Lotus is over there in the passenger seat. Snake and Seven and I, Snake and Seven and I are all squeezed into the back seat here. Still can't believe we let her drive. Woohoo! This is so fun! This is so awesome! Driving is so great when there's nothing around. 
and there's no speed limit. Hey, Clover, watch those bumps, all right? This car jumps even a little, and I think I'm gonna get crushed to death. Hey, shut it. Can't help it if I'm big, all right? Suck it up. Why don't you drive, Seven? I'm a cop. I ain't gonna break the law. He doesn't have an international license. Yeah, but you could have sat in the passenger seat. Oh, hell no. There's no way I'm giving up this seat up. And Clover, there's no need to slow down. The car Santa and Six are in should be somewhere down the road ahead of us. Yeah, I saw some fresh tire tracks going out. There's no doubt about it. Then we've gotta hurry if we wanna catch them, don't we? Sure thing! Oh shit! God damn it, she doesn't have to drive so fast. Man, I didn't even think a car like this could go this fast. We're sure throwing up a lot of dust. It was a couple hours after after we'd run into the junior high students. They'd been hiding in the bush and bushes on the back of one of the hills, drenching a kitten in gasoline. The moment we saw what they were doing, Jumpy ran up to them, furious. Hey, what the hell are you doing? Then he jumped onto them. He quickly scooped up the kitten and tossed it to me. I caught it and ran for the police station as fast as I could. Help me, officer, please! You have to come with me! The policeman and I headed back to the hill. All we found was Jumpy sprawled on the ground with a face covered in big, swelling lumps. You couldn't run away after you threw the kitty to me? I asked him. He stuck his tongue out through the hole in his mouth where, the, where a tooth had fallen out. Yeah, I guess I coulda. Then, why didn't you? I didn't want to. I wanted to beat him up. Beat him up real good. Because of, because of what they were doing to the kitty? Yeah, that too, but I think they were the ones behind those murders our first semester. Remember? Oh, you mean the bunnies? Yeah, the bunnies. He plucked some grass from the ground and tossed it into the wind. They asked me what elementary school I was from, so I told them. Then they said they'd do the same thing to you that they did to the rabbit. I couldn't forgive, forgive them for that. So, I... Hey, there's still some stuff that I don't get. Of course, they probably don't know any more than I do. Like, Ace. Well, I guess I should say Gintaro Hongo. Why did he create the Nonary Project? Anybody? Any ideas? <laughs> Why don't you ask him yourself? Well, yeah, I guess I could. He's still in the trunk, I assume. Yeah, he is. Still tied up, I'm assuming, with his mouth taped shut. Well, might as well have a little chat with the old man. His eyes just look... empty. No emotion. He looks like he's just given up. I wonder if he even cares what happens to him anymore. Hey, were you listening to us? Yeah, go ahead and try to pretend you weren't, you old bastard. Let's get that tape off of your mouth. Come on, I know you were. Answer me. You could at least look at me when you talk, man. I... I only wanted to see the faces. Human faces. I thought... I thought that if I could gain the ability to access the morphic field set, then perhaps I could see faces. By peering into people's minds, you could understand how they were processing the expressions of others. That's it? Yes, if you want to put it simply. But if you are looking for a more philosophical answer, I can supply that as well. You see, the human collective consciousness- I think that's enough out of you, pal. Time for the tape to go back on. Alright, so what's your second question? You said there were some things you didn't get, didn't you? Well, somebody's a little nosy. Well, my next question doesn't really have anything to do with you two. This is for you, Seven. It's about the whole Alice thing. What's the deal with that? Well... See, nine years ago, after I escaped from the Gigantic, I kept going after Hongo on my own, hoping I'd catch him when he finally slipped up. During the course of my investigations, I learned a lot more about the Gigantic. I also found out about Gordain and Alice. You're not really answering my question. Was there actually a girl who wouldn't melt at room temperature? Mm, 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 mm. 
Sounds like Hongo has something to say. Alright, fine. I'll let you talk. But you gotta behave. What? Alice doesn't exist. Nine years ago, I found Alice's coffin behind the library on the bottom deck. There was nothing in it but the root of a peculiar plant. My research determined that it was a member of the genus of the genus Mandragora, of the fam family Solanaceae. I was able to extract a particular alkaloid from it. I used that ex extract to create Soparil. Its creation was a tremendous boon to my firm, and we grew rapidly. Shit, this is gonna go on forever. Tape's going back on, Hongo. The rest of my questions can wait a bit. For now, I think I'll just enjoy the ride. Here. Here. This is for you. What is this? This is a for you doll. His name is Junpei. Jumpy pulled something out of his pocket and shoved his, out his arm toward me. In his hand was a doll made of yarn small enough to fit in his palm. Jumpy, are you sure it's a, uh, for you doll? Huh? Yeah, the lady at the shop said that. Said so. That means it's for you, right? Um, I... Are you sure it's not a voodoo doll? What? That's... Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> well, it sure looks like a voodoo doll. I mean, you do know what a voodoo doll is used for, right? Y yeah I guess calling it Junpei isn't a very good idea, then. Why are you giving me this, anyway? It just seems really sudden. Uh, well, um, you know how after June we aren't going to get to see each other too much? I mean, we're going to be in different schools, and I just thought I'd, uh, you know, um, oh, okay, well, how about we call it June, then? Oh, uh, okay. So, I wanted to give this you <laughs> you sound like some sort of tribal chief in a bad movie yes I head of tribe this doll traditional charm of tribe <laughs> so I give this it me so we always together oh jumpy if something bad then hold and pray Go wherever you are. So here, take. I reached my hand out and picked up the doll gently. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jumpy. Before I knew it, I was crying. Tears streamed down my face and fell onto June's tiny yarn body. Oh, Jumpy. I'll never forget you. I promise. Jumpy looked straight into my eyes and said just five words. I'll never forget you either. The sky was a beautiful crimson red as it melted down toward the horizon. The last golden rays of sunlight stretched out across the city and painted themselves across the hills. We sat, bathed in a warm light of evening. Just the two of us, leaning gently against one another, shoulder to shoulder. The sun set and we still didn't leave. We watched in silence as the darkness deepened, and one by one the lights of the town began to flicker on. There's still one thing I don't get. To be honest, it's the biggest mystery as far as I'm concerned, and also the only one that's really important. It has to do with June and Akane. Nine years ago, she died in the incinerator on the Gigantic. But she's still alive now, was June. But how? Was it because I tapped into the Morphic Field set and saved her nine years ago? Hmm. Alright, let's say that makes some sort of kind of insane sense. If I did that, then... How do I make sense of what Seven remembers? Snake makes sense, he's blind. He couldn't have seen her body anyway. But Seven... He said he was sure he saw it. Does that mean there's some kind of 
historical discrepancy? Or... Wait. Maybe that's not it at all. There is one other logical explanation. Was what you told me the truth, Seven? You look... satisfied. No. No way. You couldn't... Hey, look! Over there! There's somebody, somebody next to the road! Huh? What? Hmm? The burning gaze of the Nevada sun pounded down on her head. The desert around her rippled with heat. Standing there, on that shimmering plain, it was a woman, her arm out and her thumb up. It would not be long before Junpei realized who she was.